everybody. Welcome to the Epic Home Bonds Podcast. My name is Josh Quillen. I'm here with... Andrew Van Dyke. And we How have are we a, doing? We have a very special guest tonight. Uh, somebody we've never had on the show, who's never been on... Uh, wasn't in the film. And I am excited to dive into this and see what they're doing, how they're doing it, and what it's going to be. And we also have an exclusive video for you guys a little bit later as well. Just a little bit. I mean, I, you know, it's so nice funny. little teaser trailer. A little teaser. I think I think that's what this is all about is uh, identifying different things. Like we 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 touched on, you know, some rides, some like tracks and yep. stuff like that. Now we need to actually go in a little bit deeper and figure out what's going on in different places of the world of the world yeah yeah, yeah. not in uh not in la or <laughs> no. uh, well well we were in uh oh god where are they indiana last indiana. week indiana so, so yeah we got some stuff um cool all right well housekeeping items let's go through a couple of housekeeping items here got it. uh first of all if you are not subscribed on youtube make sure you guys hit the subscribe button it seriously helps us uh and you'll get notified every time we go live post new videos we have a ton of new content coming um also if you are watching this live one of the four current concurrent viewers <laughs> uh make sure you guys uh chat chat us up uh ask any questions that you guys uh want to ask and we will try to get to them live that's one of the benefits of seeing this live uh additionally if you're not a member of the YouTube uh, group, we I don't know what you call it, the Epic Home Hunts YouTube membership program. <laughs> what is this? I don't know what it's called. Uh, make sure you guys join. There's two different uh, two different levels. There's the Haunt Fan, the Haunter um, level. Uh, Haunter level gets a few more things that the Haunter Fan doesn't get, including yes. assets of which we just dropped the first asset pack today. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, we dropped uh, a bunch of Thunder audio, a bunch of Rain and Thunder loops and stuff like that, and it's stuff that we've recorded personally. It's all our own. All our own stuff. Uh, so you guys can go on to youtube.com slash Epic Home Haunts. Hit the little join button. Um, helps us out. All that, all of those funds go towards funding uh, the sequel to this film here, which we are currently working on. Um, awesome. I don't think I think that's it, right? I really do. I think that I think that sums all right. up. So without further ado, we're gonna bring in Sean from Wicker Manor. What's going on, Sean? How you doing? How's it going? Hey guys, good. How are you doing? We're fantastic. Uh, you are in a cavish thing. Can you? Where are you right now? I am. I am in the uh, the gold mine. Ah. So this year, uh, we decided to do a completely new theme, and uh, I'm obsessed with the Western era. So we decided to do a gold mine. That's fantastic. Um, I, and we have some super cool teaser stuff we're going to show uh, in just a little bit. Or actually, when do you want to show that? Do you want to show that now? When do you want to release your? I mean, it's your teaser. When? When do you? You wanna... do what you want to do, man. Uh, should we save that we for a little bit now? Later? Yeah, we could set it up, and then we could talk about the haunt after that. Oh, okay. Be... All right, all right. So let's here real quick. Let's cut back to us, and uh, and and Andy's gonna cue up the teaser trailer for a second. So the Wicker Manor is a Western theme, which I freaking love. Uh, there's not a ton of Western themed uh, haunts no. uh, out there. I mean, Boot Hill, you get a lot of not, not scary farm stuff, which that's why I like it. Cause it always reminds me of ghost town and not scary farm. Before we go to this, it might be good to kind of explain what it is as well. Um, so we'll go through this a lot more, but this, uh, this year we did a entire ride simulator uh, of an elevator that goes down into the mine shaft. Uh, and with that, um, I brought on a few of my close friends or, who are in the animation kind of design world and stuff like that. So That's awesome. everything that you see was um, animated from scratch uh, using Cinema 4D uh, and After Effects. So we started all nice. the way from storyboards uh, to timing it, to doing the 3D, to doing the post-production. Uh, and then we actually had a Foley artist do all of the sound uh, live. And then we of course had a sound editor do all the mixing and stuff like that so this 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 piece that we're about to show is a custom piece that you would see inside the elevator for the first time yeah nice all right let's go ahead and uh and move on over and and take a take a look let's let's, let's do let's it take a little gander and see what's up here
That looks insane. What I is? Am... What is? Oh, I don't. I do. What happened just now? <laughs> I, was, I was quite uh, quite blown away. As far as I'm oh, concerned, what uh, what what was the what was the idea behind bringing all of it to to fruition? Like, yeah. So that piece. So when we we were doing. So usually we have a Victorian house haunted house theme. Uh, and it was my wife's idea one year to talk about a cave okay. in a gold mine. So uh, I was like, okay, well, some of the coolest mines that I've heard about uh, are in Colorado. And there's a mine that has uh, one of the first elevators that takes you down into the actual gold mine. Uh, it's actually near Colorado Springs. Um, nice. I think it's called <laughs> Molly Kathleen gold mine or something like that. But um but yeah, so I've always just been so enamored with the idea of going into an elevator that would take you down below the ground, right. you know? So uh, with that, I was kind of just like, you know what, like it'd be really crazy to do an actual elevator that's on airbags, you know, and make a whole simulator. Uh, we didn't have the idea for like the video quite yet, but we knew we wanted to do some type of elevator ride. Sure. Um you know, and, and my primary job is a designer. So I just assumed that I was going to throw in Photoshop timeline and make like some super cheesy, you know, like uh, 2D flat animation for this thing. Oh, um, got it, got it. You know, so it started there. And then, you know, I, I was watching a whole bunch of different people who have done elevator simulators on YouTube. Uh, and one of the things that always struck me out as being a little rough around the edges was just like their attention to detail with the actual video aspect. Sure. And to me, it was just like, okay, well like that, if that's going to push it over the edge, like that's what I want to focus on. And luckily uh, a lot of the, the people that I work with on a pretty consistent basis in my field uh, are just really good animators and 3d artists and sound designers and Clearly, like that, it looked so. amazing. So um, he basically pulled all the ringers out. He pulled yeah. all the ringers yeah. out <laughs> and said, Hey, this is what we're going to do. And he yeah, was like, yeah, exactly. Hey, I, I owe them a lot of drinks for sure. I think we're going to take a look at uh, some photos here. Yeah, let's uh, let's bounce over to taking a look at the elevator and the the the, the build progress that you that you went through. So first picture we're looking at here uh, is just this, uh, like a skeleton frame. So this looks like a bunch of two by four just framed out. Um, and this is where you started, I'm assuming. I mean, obviously you had plans and things, right? Yeah, I kind of had a an outline of a base. You know, so I knew the size of my garage and I knew the very uh, tight space that I had to fit in between. Um, so my max amount of space that I could actually fit in this thing was like a five foot by five foot square. Um, so okay, cool. So with it, the biggest thing that I needed to focus on was getting it on that five by five square. Um, okay. That makes sense. The garage is literally only, like just shy of 300 square feet. Um, so to throw an entire elevator simulator in 300 square feet and still have room for yeah, a bunch a of deal. other scenes, uh, it was kind of tricky to do. So I mean, the that's framing, a, that's of course, a sixth of your haunt. You know, I mean, that's, that's huge. <laughs> that's a big, yeah, it's a big portion of it for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and if that's the showstopper, that's the piece, right? Like yeah. that's like. Well, I mean, to put it into perspective, because uh, we don't have a video on the channel that is from you, but we do have a video uh, from Jeremy Kent who did Echoes of Echoes of Nightmares Past, I think is what it was called, here in Florida. His haunt that we have the walkthrough video on our YouTube channel is 300 square feet. It's exactly oh, 300. Really? Yeah. Cool. And and he did a lot of stuff, which uh, kind of looks like from some of the photos you're doing, which we'll show in a little bit, where he built everything on diagonals to try to make it feel way bigger than it really was. So you just kind of kept going back on yourself over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's a good trick. Yeah, I know. It worked really well. Um, I'm super excited to see what you do this year. So, okay. So let's move through some of these. So you went from this this basic two by four frame here for the elevator into, it looks like you framed it out. Uh, this looks pretty pretty substantial ply board you framed us out with um yeah so like the biggest thing with with the the framing piece was like i i needed to be careful 
cause this thing moves quite a bit, you know, like I, I, at first I was like, Oh, I think I need full two by fours in order to make this thing safe and secure. Yeah. Um, and then as I was worried about space on a five foot platform and how many people were going to fit in there, you know, just that extra little bit, uh, that I saved from actually using two by threes instead of two by fours ended up being pretty substantial. Um, so I ended up framing the whole thing with two by threes. Uh, and then the plywood was just like as thin a ply as I could do. Uh, and then just did a lot more supports. Uh, so people aren't falling through there. So the next picture, which I'll show in a second, it gets, it's drastic. Cause all of a sudden it gets painted. It literally just goes from like <laughs> this wood framed box to like, Oh my God, it's a, it's a rusted elevator. But I want to talk about this door for a second. So the hardware that's on here, I mean, this looks like a legit, like something somebody would renovate like a, a house with like yeah. this door roller. <laughs> it looks like a barn door, like the barn door. Like it's some like fancy HGTV kitchen remake. Yeah, it like. totally is. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's straight from Amazon or home Depot or something like that. Um, so you're yeah, just going to roll it by hand back and forth. Obviously it's, it, you're not going to do any from automatic. Yeah, no, I don't. I had a few things that I wanted to do to it that were, um, a little bit above and beyond what we'll have this year. Um, but I'll, you know, with how much time is left, you know, I don't think I'll quite get to it. Uh, one of them was like automatic door opens and close. Uh, moving, yeah, um, moving. but yeah, that, that's not going to happen this year. No, I mean, that's, and that's totally fine. Um, yeah. For those who don't know, you guys open on October 1st. So you're right. You're coming up on, on what? Uh, 11 days, 12 days, something like that. Yeah. If I, if I can count math is hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's move on to this next picture. So bam, all of a sudden it's painted and it's just, it's glorious. <laughs> <laughs> it literally goes from like a box, just a wood box to just, Oh my God, it's an elevator. It's I, I'm pretty sure you hoped that it actually went that fast with windows. Yeah. I wish it went that quick in real life. No, this paint, your uh, paint, paint job is fantastic. It is amazing. It's really well done. Um, thank you. And I'm guessing the light on the outside functions. Um, and you have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's two speakers. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff from framing it to where that picture is there. Yeah. Let's um, go the the biggest thing i think in between those was it was the most difficult was actually like 3d printing a bunch of the hardware so uh oh. i ended up like i don't know if you can tell in the picture if it's from the exterior you might not be able to see maybe you can see them on the door um but i had to 3d print like 120 bolts like bolt heads you oh. know and so oh, they're yeah, all just they're right there yeah yeah they're all just 3d printed on my 3d printer uh, and then I just glued on before a paint job, you know, wow. um, but you know, that was one detail that I wanted to make sure was in there. Uh, and then, um, then, yeah, we have, uh, a front speaker and then a, a rear speaker, um, that because we were able to do fully with audio, uh, and have a sound designer mix it. Um, I requested, he's like my best friend. So I was very, very nice in requesting, but I requested <laughs> that he, do a different mix for the front speaker than the rear speaker so that the rear speaker has more reverb, a little less of the like zombie scream and stuff like that. Whereas the front one is like more, much more in your face. So, nice. so yeah, there is uh there's two speakers in there. Um, okay. And then after hearing the audio, I was like, man, I should really put a sub in here um, to really give it some bass, but I don't think that's happening either. Yeah. <laughs> You're just gonna, this elevator sounds incredible. So uh, the next photo here, it's the inside, but it's the back wall. So you can see, uh, we can see the, the metal bar, like a metal handrail. Um, and then up here, the, the grill where it's hiding the speaker, um, the grill's not in, but you can see the, the blue tape there that you've put in. Um, again, paint job is amazing. See those, those bolts that you 3d printed. I mean, that's a crazy thing. Like that's a new thing. Like that's the craziest thing to the, add. The three D. Like, yeah. Bolts. Like adding, like adding something like that. You like you would think that somebody was actually like going in and bolting that, but three D printing. I mean, that's a whole. No, other, it's a great idea. I mean, um, it's fantastic. So Scott Sibley from um, uh, why am I? He's in the movie Beware of the Dark Realm. Holy mackerel, Scott! I apologize for forgetting. <laughs> Jeez, that just happened. <laughs> the name of your haunt. Um, he did. A, he had a really interesting trick um, to do bolts where he didn't 3D print them. He would take googly eyes and he would glue the googly eyes on and then wow. just, you know, paint them and, and you know, maybe you know, put something on top in a little bit. But it just gives it that little bit of extra depth. 
you know, like we're looking at here on this picture where if those little bumps weren't there, you probably would Yeah, you wouldn't recognize that something is missing, but when you see it, you go, oh yeah, without that, it would it wouldn't look right. But, but like you said, sure attention right. to detail. Like that that is attention to detail. Like the idea that you went through and you three D printed so many bolts. Yeah, and I can see uh, in the background of this picture some of the lighting and a flip flop hanging out back there. <laughs> um, <laughs> a flip flop? Yeah. A... <laughs> oh, cool. Hey. A little extra for you guys. There um, you go. But so we'll move on. So now we're looking at the front screen or the the front. I guess where everyone's going to be mostly facing, where the screen uh, gets gets built in. Um, I mean, again, attention to detail is is wonderful. Um, it's so well done. There's more of those bolts. Look at that. The air vent. Now, there is a roof, right? The last picture, I believe, had the ceiling in. Yeah. Yeah, and the roof is uh, actually one of my favorite parts, to be honest. Um, because, because this whole thing shakes and moves, I wanted to really kind of sell that effect. And in order to do that, um, I don't know if you saw the exterior lights. They're kind of like those more industrial kind of fixed uh, sconce lights. Um, but the inside, I was just going to put one of those in the, in the roof. Um, but when I like kind of placed it up there, I was like kind of thinking, you know, like if, if you're in this elevator and it's jolting around, uh, it'd be much more dramatic if the whole light was banging and swinging above your head, you know? Um, so I put that light uh, with plenty of room to swing above people's heads. Like the whole thing is like eight feet tall. So it's a massive beast. That's huge. Wow. Um, yeah. So the, the hanging light just really, uh, really highlights that you're actually moving um, and pushes it that much further. Nice. No, I didn't even realize that. We're, I'm showing the, the, the picture um, uh, where you've got the, I'm guessing it's like a paint thing, like the grate and then the two outdoor lights and the inside light. Uh, kind of laid out on on a on a blanket, so we can see the detail really close up for what you did here. Um, yeah, and that was just uh, like my resting technique that I do on all my lanterns, and it looks uh, fantastic. Yeah, like I, these uh, these little toys that I got, uh, like headlamps for toys. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, these are just from Amazon, and I haven't distressed the actual light yet. I'm going to make that look a lot less uh, good, um, but. Yeah, it's just the same technique I do on all my lanterns and stuff like that. So there's a couple of people asking, um, what uh, one? What 3D printer do you use? Uh, yeah, so the 3D printer I use is the Prusa um, MK3S. I believe that's what it's called. Okay. Um, they have like a Prusa MK3 and then a MK3S, which is like their newer one. Uh, I pretty much bought the 3D printer because I knew that I was going to want to print some stuff for the haunt. Um, so I'm by no means like a 3D <laughs> oh, printing Oh, darn, guru. you have to buy a 3D printer. I've been trying to convince my wife to let me buy one, and I'm like, I haven't I haven't found a good excuse. Jay, he hasn't found a perfect reason to do <laughs> yeah. it yet. He'll find it sooner or later. To be honest, it's cool, but like I had this like this like wild thought that it was like prints like a quick you know, no, and like slow. I printed a 3D skull and it took like five days. The other question about the 3D print stuff was what software are you using for, for your 3D printer? Like I'm guessing for the models to go into it. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Prusa the, uh, has its own uh, software that comes with that machine. It's called Prusa Slicer. Um, that's primarily what I use. I do, um, I do some 3D work you know, like as just as a creative person for fun. So I'm pretty comfortable in cinema 4d, uh, to like build shapes and stuff like that. So nice. usually if I like think of something, I'll build it in a 3d program, more like cinema 4d, uh, and then export like an OBJ file, uh, into Prusa slicer, uh, to actually print it. Oh, nice. Um, but, uh, I mean, in general though, with 3d printing, um, you know, if if somebody really wanted to get into the 3D stuff, I mean, as far as I know, you can you can use Blender um, to be able to make those objects, which is completely open source and completely free. If anybody wants to get into 3D, I've been doing CG art and, and 3D stuff for like 15 years now, so I'm I'm mildly well versed in it. Um, I actually just started Unreal, which I may have to message you about and see if you know anybody with some tips because Unreal is Unreal. Unreal. Like, Unreal. The, the amount I have to learn to just be able to like. <laughs> use that system is hurting my brain. Um, 
But yeah, no, 3D technology is, is, is really cool stuff. And Blender is something I highly suggest people learn, um, even just to create you know, little random scenes for their TVs or just, you know, something for a 3D print or just to create like 3D titles for your haunt or stuff like that. Like, yeah. And actually that video that we watched at the beginning, um, that cave scene, once you fall to the bottom, um, that cave scene is actually, uh, built in unreal engine. So, Oh, is it? Oh, I'm going to have to look, I'm gonna have to watch it back. Unreal engine is bonkers. Uh, we're getting off on a weird nerdy 3d, <laughs> nerdy here, but uh, yeah, no, unreal engines. Absolutely unreal. It's fantastic. So the TV is going to go, uh, in here. How big is this? How big of a TV are you using? It doesn't look huge. I think it's like a 55 inch. Never mind. Wow. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, it's, it's <laughs> pretty significant. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it's off. like a 55 inch 4k screen. Oh, just uh, that. Oh, that's it. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I don't know if I was going to, you know, I had these guys do this uh, render out, you know, in 4K uh, to start, and which took like a whole weekend of render time. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. I needed a screen that could, you know, support higher quality video for sure. So yeah. was, that, was that another one of those shucks moments? Like, oh, I needed a 3D printer. Oh, I needed a 55 inch 4K. Hey, yeah. no matter what happens, I get to walk That's out of here with a 55 inch 4K. That's going to magically make it into my den when I'm done with the haunt. Like, <laughs> yeah, it literally just goes into storage. So then we have the base. Describe this this platform and how you made it and how it works for those who may not understand or have any knowledge of like airbags and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so this the whole airbag thing is completely out of my wheelhouse. Um, so this is actually a Fright Props uh, motion platform. Oh, oh uh, this is so pretty Every year I fly out to Transworld in nice, St. Louis. lucky. Um, mainly just to have fun and look at props. Yeah, you know? lucky. <laughs> um, but yeah, knowing that I needed to build an elevator this year, like I went out there with intentions this time. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, hit up uh, Scott from Fright Props at the convention and just told him exactly the specs that I needed. Uh, and uh, they helped me out. So um, yeah, so I, I can't really speak too much about that other than, um, yeah, they built a solid platform. The thing is, <laughs> like, it's indestructible for sure. It, 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 it looks thick. It looks... That is a thick boy. It, lo it, it looks massive. It actually probably looks like it takes up more of your haunt than anything else from the pictures. How tall is your garage? Because if, if the elevator is eight feet, it's... I mean, this platform looks like it's a good 12 inches at least. Yeah, so... Um, that's the biggest thing with our haunt that I wanted to focus on this year. Uh, our walls are, the haunt walls are eight feet. Um, but our actual garage is like 14 feet tall. Oh, okay. So so it's somewhere. only 300 or 320, somewhere in there, square foot, total square. Um, but if you like look up, like this whole cave goes up 14 feet. Wow. Um, Look at that. So this Whoa. year, instead of instead of just building, you know, because we, we have a square box, you know. Yeah. And so this year I wanted to utilize the space as much as possible. So instead of just building wide, we built tall. Uh, and yeah, so this is our pro this is probably our biggest wall right here, but it goes up 14 foot over your head. So when you come into this room, it definitely feels much, much bigger than it is. Yeah, I've got a photo up right now, which I'm pretty sure is is the hallway coming in. It's sort of an up angled shot. Um, and this detail, I mean, is just incredible. Yeah, it looks tall. It looks well, like well, well done. Like the picture. I can't even imagine what it is in person, though. Well, and this is fully lit. Like, in yeah. the daytime, it looks like. And the detail is is wonderful. So yes. I can only imagine what this looks like under show lighting. Yep. Um, speaking of, of, of detail and stuff, what did you... How did you make your rock work, your rocks and things? <laughs> yeah, so that that also... So I, I went through a whole ton of different scenarios. So I hit up, actually, Diane and Preston from 907. Whoop, whoop. When... Yeah, whoop, whoop. <laughs> shout when, out. <laughs> right when uh, right when we decided to do a gold mine, I remembered back to a haunt they had, which was uh, it was like a western theme. They had a gold mine, but they also had like a bar and stuff like that. Yep. yep. Uh, so I watched that video like five hundred times and just like tried to like really think through like how did they build these rock walls? You know, like they look pretty good. Like, I wonder if they're strong, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I actually just hit them up on Instagram before I decided what we were going to do. 
Uh, and in their method, uh, it was like the craft paper spray type stuff with, mm-hmm. I think they use chicken wire and stuff like that. Um, kind of in my head, like had that as like option one, which was like chicken wire, craft paper, and like a, uh, a hopper for hardening it. You know, uh, I can't remember exactly what they used to inside their hopper to spray on it, to harden it. But, um, that was option one, uh, option two was to, uh, like do foam, you know, like uh, full on and, spray foam and like carve it out type thing. Yeah. Woo. Like chicken wire and foam. And I, I'm pretty like my garage. I feel like I keep pretty clean. So I was like, there's no way, like I'm going to spray foam in my garage. Uh, and, and that just like started to turn into like, uh, like my time is better spent elsewhere yeah, than like sitting sure. in my garage, ruining it. Um, uh, the third option was to use like vacuum form panels, um, which I use in our uh, other theme, which is a Victorian mansion. Um, so that was another option was just to use like vacuum form panels. And there's a company called uh, Nethercraft that has actual cave wall uh, panels. Yep. The issue with that that you always run into is um, they're like really, really rigid, you know, and then they only come in like four by eight sheets. So if I wanted to do like a 14 foot wall like this, it would take like four sheets and it, it would just not look good. It would look like patchwork, you know, rather than like one continuous cave. So uh, in searching, I found this company in Texas that makes uh, rock panels for like zoo enclosures. So like leopards and, you know, crazy zoo animals. And uh, I hit them up and just have been talking to them for a while now and they were kind of option four, you know, uh, and then I weighed all the options. And since, since our haunt is so like small, people bump into the walls all the time. You know, like if you get scared from somebody, you're going to lean up against this wall very, very often. Uh, so I kind of thought through like the whole like paper, hardened paper sure. is just going to get destroyed within like one night. You know, and, and since we're open for an entire month, I was like, it's just not realistic. So, yeah, um, so I hit up the, the zoo panel company and, you know, I found their biggest panels and they're 14 feet by seven feet and they flex, you know, they just bend. Got um, it. So like if you see this corner, this rock goes all the way around, you know, uh, and then goes all the way up the ceiling. So uh, we decided on that because number one, it's it's a lot safer. Nobody's going to be bumping into it and ruining everything. Number two, it just looks a lot better. These haunt walls look insane. I have the the picture of the room you're in now. Um, that's got it's it's like daytime lighting, not the show lighting, and just the detail is incredible. Like I there's I don't really I don't see any seams. Like I can't visibly find a seam yeah. anywhere in any of these it's panels. Nuts. Yeah, um, it's hard. It, I mean, it and when I, when great. I walk you through it a little bit later, I can point out, you know, where some of the seams are, but even, even through a webcam, I, I don't even know if you'll be able to notice, but, but imagine yeah. under show lighting. I well, here we go. Here, here ne- next picture. You guys ready? Boom. There we go. There's some, some lit work. Um, <laughs> now is this photo of, of where you are currently, um, what looks like potentially full show lighting, the one that you sent me that's that's very, very dark with the, the zombie guy behind you, is this what it's going to look like during the haunt? Like this dark? No, I actually haven't done any lighting yet. Oh, okay. Um, that was purely just to test um, some color, some Gantam color piano lights that I got in the mail. Oh, and I uh, go Gantam. So, like, I, I got some lighting in the mail, um, and I was like, oh, like, let me program these and just see what the flicker looks and feels like. And I was doing it in the garage. I was like, hey, that looks really good. So, so yeah, that photo, although technically, yes, like that will be what the light kind of looks like. Um, that's definitely just kind of like a test photo. Yeah. So like the creepy, two main though. things I need to do next are run, run airlines and run electrical. Uh, and then usually once all the props are uh, placed, that's what I've started now. I've started putting all props in their places um then i'll start working on lighting because I, i'll sit there and and work on lighting till the haunt opens on the first for sure yeah well that's that's uh you that's, know 
I think that's all of us. Like the lighting changes everything. Like you can you can set up everything, you know, but the moment yeah. you start to add lighting, it 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 just becomes a whole nother beast. It completely well, yeah. changes it. I think I think that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people that we've talked to throughout this these years has been they 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 are up until the last minute doing oh doing the everything. Well, things. that's the way we used to do it, which was yeah. theater shows. So oh, Andy yeah. Andy was a, a lighting designer for a long time, and we you know together I did sound, and together we would both build sets and yeah. things. Like that. And yeah, we it would be thirty seconds before showtime. You're like. <gasps> It's like a drill, like trying yeah. to get stuff I, going. I've had times, I've had times where I've cut my finger, I'm bleeding, and I'm still hitting the button to hit go on the lights for the <laughs> show itself. Like I've, yeah. I've been there, and and lighting can completely change. All the work that you're doing right now can yeah. be completely yeah. changed just by a single light, which you didn't think about. You didn't, you don't, you, you think about it piece by piece by piece by piece. Yeah. And that's like designing a set or even designing sound, right? Oh yeah. It, it, it's all so integral to the actual production. Yep. And then yep. it's last minute stuff that changes it. Well, that's, you know, as you, did you talk about sound as an example? I'll, I'm going to, I'll take this opportunity to, to pitch our join thing. Um, so if you go to Epic Home Hots, uh, youtube.com slash Epic Home Hots and you hit join, uh, one of the things we're giving to the Haunter level members are asset packs. And one of the things we gave out today um, were four uh, full rain, so, uh, some with rain, some without rain, some with wind, but thunder and lightning recordings. Some of them are incredible. And we have a ton more as well. Um, but just those loops, like everything loops. So whenever yeah. we design sound effects, um, spoiler alert for those who don't know, um, we, uh, used to run a sound effects company for haunt production. And so we have sounds all over yeah. the place, but every sound we make, we try to make them loop and they're all very aerial and things like that. And they're all stereo. So you can add multiple, you know, speakers in different places. But yeah, once you add lighting and sound, it completely changes everything. Like in, in what you're doing, um, what are you guys planning on doing for sound, uh, since, since we're on that topic? Yeah. Sound. I, I mean, those two things I think are more important than anything. Um, because you know, you can, you can have a, a decent prop that doesn't look that great. And it, with the right sound and lighting, it can be the most terrifying thing in the world. Oh, yeah, it's instantly um, frightening. So I think, you know, those two things, if, if you focus on that, is, is clutch for sure. Uh, for lighting this year and sound, lighting, I'm, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm pretty hyper alert to trying to make things as like, realistic as possible. Um, so... I'm not going to use any colored lights uh, except for in one room. And I'll show you that room. Uh, we have a dynamite scene where the whole room nice. explodes. So yes. there will be red lights in there, you know, with fog and stuff that goes off. Um, and I can show you that when we do a little walkthrough. But um, everything else as far as lighting is going to be like lanterns and natural light. You know, awesome. I don't, oh, perfect. I don't like, uh, I don't like like blues and greens and stuff like no. that unless, uh, unless it would like require it, like maybe a witch theme or something like that. Right. Well, uh, yeah. your, your story, you're so far down in the mine shaft, like you probably wouldn't get any moonlight coming in through the, through the, through the roof and things anyway. So yeah, it would be all lantern. Well, yeah. And I think yeah. theming and like era time wise, like in the era that you're looking at, right. It is, it's not Fire right form. now. We're not 20th century, 21st century. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Like yeah. style, you're you're taking this way back. So they although I mean, you could go full X Files, and all of a sudden there's like <laughs> <laughs> aliens, some hey. modern alien craft <laughs> coming out of the wall. Cowboys versus aliens. <laughs> you could completely change, you know, the way that it works. But no, no, no. I think that, that's awesome. Like lanterns, like that's that's fantastic. No, you did it yeah. all just off that. Yeah. And actually, uh, at the end of the haunt, you actually exit the mine shaft into a cemetery where all the miners are buried. Nice. Um, so wow. we do have opportunities in the haunt this year to do, you know, maybe more foggy, like greenish blue type stuff for like moon and, and swamp type feels. Now, is that going to um, be out front the garage where the cemetery yeah, is? Yeah, it's, it's in the garage too. Oh, it's in the, what? Oh yeah, my it's, goodness. So we have, we have like, we have a entrance scene. We have the elevator. We have a hallway one slash big tall cave we have a dynamite explosion scene and then we have the uh minor cemetery so five full different scenes that's incredible so i have the the picture of the outside of your garage so just so people know like when you say 300 square feet no no, no this is a two-car 
garage, like a normal two car garage. That's ridiculous. I, it's, yeah, it's incredible. And you know, moving through some of these pictures, we can see like the front scene. You actually, actually, this is a good picture to see some of the um, the rock work, the panels. This is the this is the shot, Sean, where we can see like the motor for the garage up at the top. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not working with a ton of room here. And the stuff that you're you're putting together is absolutely incredible. But I think that goes to show, like, you don't need a five car garage. You don't need a huge backyard. No offense, Chamber of Souls. You don't need a huge backyard <laughs> to do um, to no. build, build a haunt. I mean, maybe if you're going to build a full replica of the haunted mansion or something, maybe you do. But like, but I'm done. Um, <laughs> um, but no, I, no, I'm looking, I'm legit. I'm legit trying to find any seam in any of these photos under regular light. That's oh, great. Right. And Could you imagine trying to figure out where these seams are, where like, like it, it, it's ridiculous. Like, and you couldn't even begin to identify what parts of what, where they start. Where it's they great. Begin. Like, I mean, this is the attention to detail. Like you said at the beginning, right? Like. Attention to detail is what you are really striving for here, and I, I'll give you that. It's it's fantastic, man. It's absolutely, absolutely, Indeed. absolutely crazy what you're doing. Um, yeah, we're looking then, at we're, we're looking at the shot pre rock work or anything. That's just like the framing right at the entrance of the garage. Okay, like the black walls. The black mm -hmm. walls, yeah. Yeah, um, that's another thing you can start to see how OCD I am. Um, like every wall that we painted is. Uh, matte black, of course, yeah. but uh, for some reason, we decide to always paint front and back panels, mm. uh, even though protection. you don't see any of the back, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's that, just like, I don't know. That's a Hollywood Haunter thing, though. So Gina um, and Chris are very adamant about painting both sides um, to prevent warping and then just to, like, oh. keep the flats, you know, longer, like, to make sure they're protected. Um, yeah, that you, makes sense. You definitely want to make sure you paint. Is there any is there any chance we could take a tour? Can we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so there's no lighting set up, and hopefully internet will work. Just tell me if it starts to chop out a little bit. Um, but yeah, let me walk you around. I'll kind of show you everything, and I'll point out the things uh, that we're still working on, of course. All right, here we go. I am so Oh, it's dark outside this. already. Holy cow. Oh, yeah, you're in Colorado. We're in Florida. And I'm like, it's been dark for like three hours. What are you talking about? Yeah, let me get a flashlight. Hold it's on. Been, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been solid dark for a minute. And you're yeah. in Denver, right? Denver. Yeah, we're just like 15 minutes east of Denver. Okay. Um, where is my flashlight? There it is. Yeah, 15 minutes east of Denver in a town called Central Park. Used to be called Stapleton, and then they changed the name. Got it. Okay. So yeah. So for those who are interested in maybe attending uh, 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 Wicker Manor this year, uh, Denver, Colorado, um, look it up. You guys should definitely check it out. And you don't charge anything or you know anything like that, correct? Yeah, correct. It's it's just uh, free. Nice. Yeah. Do, do you do any donations for charity or anything? Yeah. Every year we've done. Um, I believe last year was ACLU, uh, and we raised like two thousand. It's incredible. It's awesome. Um, usually, what we do is whatever people donate will match it, uh, and then donate that whole lump sum. That's beautiful. Perfect. So definitely get out there, guys. Uh, especially if they're going to donate and match, do it. Um, you know, want to support communities ar around the country, you know, as much as possible. Particularly just yeah. before Thanksgiving and Christmas, when you know things don't get as easy as they normally are. Yeah. Um, for yeah. A lot of and this year we haven't decided um, who or what we're. Uh, going to donate to, but uh, we'll definitely post that on Instagram when we decide. Perfect. And you guys are just Wicker Manor on Instagram. W-I-C-K-E-R-M-A-N-O-R. -E correct? Yep, that's Perfect. it. Perfect. All right. All right. Let's 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 take well, a tour. I'll, I'll just like show you around. Tell me if you want to see anything closer, but uh, everything's kind of in progress right now. Um, this is the outside of our garage. Really hard to use a laptop and do this. <laughs> Hey, you're, multi, um, you're multi talented. Yeah, so uh, over here is the actual entrance. And so this, and we got actual like 100 year old barn wood that we used for the entire inside of the, uh, of the gold mine. Um, so it really smells like an old gold mine. That's insane. Uh, props we started to lay out. Wow. 
Uh, and then as you walk in, you know, we had to do a roof for the entrance, but there's no roofs for the most part. Um, this is, and of course we're still building, this will all be masked so you don't see the edge of the, the garage. Uh, but this is the actual elevator. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you walk in and immediately, well, that makes a lot of sense because if you have to go into the mine, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yep. So you walk in and then uh, we'll have uh, a bunch of tools and someone meets you here. Uh, a lot of stuff we're going to focus on this year too is like hiding stuff where you most That's likely creepy won't look. as hell. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> you know, when are you going to get people to actually look up at that? Like that's turn around and look up. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so we have like some, some, I don't know if you noticed this when we walked in, that's kind of the point where you can actually see her hair hanging. Oh, you can. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. You couldn't see it at first, but now you're in on it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, the whole idea of, um, of coming into this is we kind of want to make it, we're still deciding on the, the actual story um, up until the elevator. So there's a chance that we might make it where it's like an actual tour that you're going on. So it's like happy and fun and, hey, let's go down into the mine shaft sort of thing. Um, and then if anyone actually notices this person above you, um, we'll kind of rush them into the elevator and say, don't look too close <laughs> in the elevator don't 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 that's take like, any mind that's to like that. the perfect like time for like sound and audio to really kick in because if you did a little sound like not a big sound but a nice little sound up in that little corner oh, yeah, that'd be great and force people to turn around oh yeah oh that'd be awesome that'd be fantastic oh god you got the video going that looks amazing Dude. so yeah this is the elevator um everything in here so here's the 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 hanging light, yeah. Little creepy light. Um, you know, you can start to see what it's going to feel like in here. Um, vent work. The handle in here is a must for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so when, when, when we went through Diane and Preston's um, uh, death triangle, I think it was, the haunt where um, – like Bermuda Triangle, the plane had crashed, and underwater you went into the fuselage of a plane, and it did its airbag mm -hmm. thing. We barely moved in that airbag fuselage, and it was very hard to stand up. And that was pre that was pre even show. Like that was you and I going through, and it was probably Preston or somebody in the back around. watching us, just making us try to fall over. But yeah, 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 yeah he was. He even <laughs> mentioned it. He even talked about the fact that he had snuck back there. Actually, no, it was his daughter. It was she his daughter. Out. Yeah, she popped out. And she's like, I, I, I was messing with it you was guys. Melissa trying to make us fall yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> He was, she was for sure. Yeah. And like, so there's like plexiglass over the TV too. I don't know if you can tell in no, the screen. But... No, you actually can't, which is even better. Yeah. So there's plexiglass and I like to stress the heck out of that. So it feels old. Um, well, that also, yeah, so that once also you go through that. A bit, so that? So that also protects your TV a bit, which is pretty, it's, it's very smart on your end. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then this is like the first hallway once you crash down. So we have a tall cave up here uh, and then some beams. And then as you go down, of course, that light, we haven't done any lighting in here, but this is the kind of main tall area. Uh, and then like some whiskey barrels are down here and stuff like that. that you got to walk around. Um, but yeah, this thing goes 14 feet up. That is crazy. That's awesome. Now, are any uh, of these um, prop figures? Are you going to do any any movements um, out of them, like a, like a cemetery, a uh, uh, grave jumper? I can't remember the term for the yep. the guy that's like, that's like on the floor. Um, or any yeah, of them so move? that's a grave buster. Grave buster. Um, that's what that it was. one's on a wiper motor. So that guy moves. Uh, when you get out of the elevator, there's just like a static prop here um, of some stuff. I. I'm, Actually, only eight because we are out of space. Um, we're only using about half of our uh, graveyard props, which is kind of a bummer. But um, most all of them move, uh, whether it's on a wiper motor or uh, pneumatics. And then also, too, I don't know if I told you this yet or not, but uh, these hats that I rusted up usually uh, are run on batteries. But I converted them to be um, run on a step mat. So as soon as you step by this guy, 
uh, his light's going to shine you in the eyes. That's amazing. Dude. That's so he'll look like he's just in the dark, out. but as soon as you trigger, his light is going to turn on. That's going to freak people Are you going to do, is it just lighting, or are you going to do lighting and some form of sound? Uh, well, yeah, actually, I probably shouldn't show you this because it's a scare, but actually <laughs> over in this little cavern over here is an actor hideout. Awesome. Um, oh, nice. I kind of figured. more like a uh, Halloween Horror Nights type scare with a button trigger. Oh, perfect. Cool. Yeah, I kind of figured when so, you, you kind of gave us a little bit of a hint when you came around the corner right there. I was like, ah. Yeah. So there's an actor in here. Uh, what's good about that is he's not going to jump out until they're really close to this guy and his light turns on. So if his light doesn't scare him, they for sure will. Brilliant. Uh, and then this this 14-foot wall is a continuous wall all the way through the rest of the haunt. Um, Whoa, okay. Into like a dead end. Uh, which goes into a, I should probably get my flashlight again, which goes into the dynamite room. Yeah, I'm really curious the, to see what you do in here. Yeah, so if you can see, like, this whole wall comes around all the way to here. One Whoa, okay, wall. wow. And then here's the dynamite scene. So I have a full animatronic talking skeleton with a three-axis skull who's going to be sitting over here by this dynamite box. Um, and he'll essentially kind of talk to you and say, hey, you're not supposed to be in here, uh, and it will explode this room. So this entire room is going to be DMX lit uh, on a trigger, um, which at that time, let me get a little something here. Yeah, I can show you something else. I have it turned on. Which, uh, once he triggers, he's going to also explode. Oh, nice. There it's going it to have a downward fogger. Wow. So that's, that's the amazing. dynamite room. And that's the way that the guests have to exit. So, okay, perfect. Yeah, and then they exit out the mine cave to the, the cemetery, which uh, we just kind of started putting stuff in here. That's nice. And then I'm guessing you go, oh, okay, so you go that way And around. then you just go outside. Yeah, and so uh, lots of different kind of details on, you know, different props in there. So one thing that was, you know, we had to sort of figure out is like, since we have the Victorian cemetery theme from last year's haunt, we wanted a way to reuse some of those props. Um, so... I'd say like 80% of our props are cemetery themed. Okay. Um, so we're like, well, we don't want to buy all new props just for a gold mine. So uh, try to try to be a little resourceful on that front. Absolutely. So since you're standing in that room real quick, before you leave the graveyard, a question just popped up in the chat about the tree that's there behind you. How did you make that? Yeah, this was a Craigslist find. No. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. I actually think that Spirit Halloween a long time ago had these as a display, maybe like 10 years ago. Um, Whoa, okay. And then I think they just gave them away to certain people and someone in Denver was selling it uh, and I snagged it for like a hundred bucks. Jeez. That's amazing. I mean, you could always, I mean, for trees, if you ever want to know about trees, just uh, anybody can just DM uh, Diane and Preston from Rotten Apple. They have made forests worth of trees uh, yeah. in their time. So, yeah. <laughs> and California burnt them down. And then they all got, yeah. Well, they all, <laughs> for Diane and Preston, they all got washed away in a flood, unfortunately. Yes. But yeah, um, that's incredible. Okay. So then, then guests just exit right out back to the, to the front there. Yeah, and then they come right out this way, and then you can kind of see more of that rock work, which kind of wraps them around back to the front. Oh, genius. There it is. Okay. Very cool. So since people were looking at that here, I'll put up um, the photo of the front of the garage, and then we can... So for those who are curious, so the entrance is right here behind this uh, gentleman with the saw, and the exit is right there. Very cool. So you just do kind of like a big U uh, through the garage. That's Yeah, you kind of start right and go all the way to the back, cut left, and then zigzag all the way back through. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, dude, the work that you are putting into this is so incredible. Um, 
the detail is mind boggling, and I'm super excited to see the fulfillment of the uh, the elevator. Yeah, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm more. I see. Here's the thing. I'm excited to see the elevator. I'm excited to see, you know, the all that. But I'm interested even more so to understand like where does it go. Like you've got so much. <laughs> yeah, where do work. you store all your stuff? Yeah, like I have to know. Like, where are you gonna? Where are you just gonna have rock walls in your garage for the next, you know, nine months? No, I'm I'm pretty. Well, actually, this year is pretty hilarious. So my wife and I bought a electric car. Uh, literally the day we started putting the rock walls in. Nice. Uh, okay. And then like we've never had an electric car, so we just were like, oh, like. We'll just park it in the front. And then, like, we went and had the electrician install our charger in the garage. Yep. And was, like, had, like, a, a crazy moment where we panicked and we're, like, what are we doing? Like, we can't build a car. <laughs> like, we have to park in the garage. Yeah, how are you going to charge your car? So we decided to move, have the charger move to the opposite wall, which means we can, like, parallel park our car like next to the garage like super close yeah and like try to swing it like behind one of the panels and snake it that's the a life of a true hunter who's like you know what no i'm not removing the hot i'm remounting my car charger <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome oh my goodness yeah. hashtag priorities hey but yeah. uh but yeah so to answer your question um we we have a big storage unit yeah Nice. Okay, so just, everything just goes into the, the the giant storage unit. Yeah, right now, like we we also have a camper that we like to camp with. Um, so usually, because everything that's in here this year, minus some of the props that we've reused, of course, and some of the cemetery stuff, um, is completely all new, brand new build stuff. So all brand new panels, uh, of course, the rock walls and everything, and of course the elevator, which I have no idea where that's going to go, but. Um, yeah, everything's new. So we officially have two separate haunts completely built that are broken down and November 1st, they'll, they'll both be in storage this time. Wow. So it sounds like you need to do something like a Victorian mansion that has an underground rock basement that you go yeah. into and like just double the size of the home. It almost sounds like like a Batman themed, like <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Wayne style. Like I don't know, it's just weird. I like it. I love that, it. That's why we did a cave though, because you can really do a lot with caves. Yes, like we're oh, like, yeah. oh, like maybe next year we can do pirates. You know? Yeah, and absolutely. A mermaid theme or something. Yeah, I mean, all it's, it's paint, right? It's like you know, it's, it's all it takes. You know, you go from like a like a brownish tan to like a grayish you know blackish type paint and it completely now it's in a completely different part of the world super yep. easy to do um awesome uh well i don't think there's any other questions in the chat um this has been really really great uh i am super excited for your haunt hopefully we get to come in uh to colorado this year um i know we were talking to chamber of souls and we're going there hopefully this year too uh we're yeah. just gonna do like a nationwide tour i mean it's gonna be super quick yeah, gonna we're, gonna those, we're gonna like, be like hitting, like in and out. Hey, we love you guys, but yeah. we gots to go. But we gotta go, Sean. This has been fantastic. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to see you again soon, and we'll do it like an aftermath show in like November or December. We'll do like a wrap up. How did it go? Definitely. Thank you for coming on. Um, if you guys want to learn more, you can go to is it wickermanor.com? Is it the website or is it? Yeah, that's the website where we have we have dates on there, um, and then if you want to contact us, uh, either on Instagram is usually the easiest. Sure, uh, which is at Wicker Manor, and then um, also just Wicker Manor at gmail dot com if you're into email. <laughs> if you're if you're into the whole if you're email. that sort of person, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but awesome! Thank you, everyone who joined uh, the the show live today. Uh, there were a bunch of bunch of people in the chat room we will be back next week uh with more uh live shows um this show is going to become members only uh in the next day or so and probably the tour is well uh, the tour may or may not become members only we'll see um but it's definitely gonna get, gonna get edited and re-uploaded for the for public consumption um yep. and then either in october or just after october all these live shows will be only for members. So check it out. Go to youtube.com slash epic home haunts. Uh, join if you can. Uh, if you can afford it, we would appreciate it. 
Um, we every dime goes to helping the show, helping the film, and just continuing to push home haunting into the culture and, and everything that everyone is doing. Yeah, I think I think that's what it's all about, guys. Honestly, yep. it's about it's about building the relationships, building the culture, and building and, the community. Yeah, and like I said, we've we've gotten to know some really great people that we haven't gotten to like see what they do, and now we're gonna have the chance to fly out there and see what and they see do. Even more people. But if you guys have a haunt, uh, we want to know about it. So if you guys can shoot us an email, uh, it is contact at epichomehaunts.com. Com. We'll throw it up on the screen real quick so you guys can see that. There it is. Contact at EpicHomeHunts.com. Shoot us an email. I, trust me, we flag all of them to organize them. We don't reply to all of them instantly, but it all goes into like a bin for us to start organizing and, and finding new haunts and haunted attractions that are out there in the country. Absolutely. Um, I actually just got an email today from somebody in Canada who has a, a home haunt that they've been doing for 18 years. So there are people out there. It is a worldwide thing um and hopefully eventually we will get to maybe a chapter three uh, epic home hunts we'll hey, be able to get out to other parts of the country anytime i get a chance to continue to do this i'm gonna probably take oh it. for sure i'm taking the chance Absolutely, for sure for sure um great well this has been fun thank you everybody for joining us if you are listening to the audio version of this make sure you check us out on sundays uh you can check it out live uh if you're for now and if you know maybe after october to be members only and if you want to see the video versions of this again if you're listening to the audio version go to youtube.com slash epic and you actually see what in the heck we're talking about we will see you guys next week uh thank you for joining us uh i'm josh quillen andrew van dyke thank you sean Thank you, Sean, very much. And, uh, oh, you're muted. There we go. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and we will see you guys uh, on the ne next episode.